So he is a satirist, he's an actor, he, he has his own show on television. He's a man of many things. I told you at the start of the show that we had a surprise for you. Well, let's <laughs> unveil the surprise. We give you, ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Lassisi. KSM, Quickus in my, that's my son or, oh, or my nephew, which of them? I call you Uncle K. You so call me Uncle K, you're nephew. my nephew. <laughs> you're my nephew. <laughs> Good to have you on the show, Uncle K. Thank you. It's so been a while. It's been a while, long. And you've actually not, you were telling me you had never been on this show before. No, I've never How been come? on. I didn't say I'm for a bit. Oh, actually, actually, let me be frank, you mm. know. Um, uh, I don't know how many people know, but I just turned 66, Minyambo Frasa. Two days ago. Two days ago, yeah. And so I, you are 66 years and two days. 66 years, two days. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember writing to Benjamin, said, Benjamin, for my 66th year, I would like to spend it on your show. Aww. You know, show some love for Benjamin, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you would mention that on air. I oh, I mean, you, oh, you know me. Be very, very careful. Yeah, you never know what I'll mention. The, the last time we... <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that gives me some pause. I have to think twice before I go ahead. The last time we sat like this, you were interviewing me. Yes. For your KSM show. I, yes. And yes. Uh, today I am interviewing you. To, yes, uh, yes. Nephew, nephew and uncle. I'll, I'll try yes, not to be Yes, I'll, yes, I'll try yes, not yes. To be. And I've been watching you, uh, you know, I said, oh, wow. But my nephew is of age now. Uh -huh. My nephew is of, he's doing so well. I like to sit down and chat with him. So it means a lot that I'm with you today, you know. It, it means Nephew. a whole lot to us. Yeah. But first of all, congratulations yeah. on 66 years of wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Thank impact. You. Thank you. Not just in Ghana, in the US, in other places. And your fans. I mean, some of you couldn't see that. But when he got in here, a medical doctor just ran in. All the producers, <laughs> people were politicians, those who were right on set. <laughs> Everyone wanted a piece of him. That's, that's just the figure you are. But Thank you. Me, 66 years of life mm. and so you were born some four months before independence i was born before independence i was born some in four months because yes. december december and it was in march six yeah yeah so i was born before i'm older than ghana you are older than ghana yeah technically speaking technically when you say in ghana what i beg your pardon when you say in ghana when you say ghana uh, ghana is much but <laughs> yeah. now maybe we should start from there how have you been over over these last few months years yeah you, you you're very active on social media we'll go there we'll <laughs> go there but what what has 2022 been like for ksm well i think that the most critical thing and honestly one of the reasons i wanted to be here with you because i have a very very important message and i was looking for a platform that i can deliver the message and i said thanks be to god if i'm 66 Maybe there are some important things I can share mm. with, with, with Ghanaians. Right. Especially yeah. the young people. Especially the young you. people. Yeah. You know. And um, my nephew, I'm, I'm sure you probably know, but I've been through uh, a battle with prostate cancer yeah. in the last year, you know. And actually, to summarize it all up, I actually had to go, I was in the U.S. and I had to go through protest to me. I think that's what they call it, the radical pro right. protestomy, or, you know, that's a very radical surgery to get rid of your entire prostate, you know. Wow. Yeah. And it started when a friend of mine told me um, he was now working with the uh, American Rejuvenation Center or something. So he wants me to come and do a checkup, come and take your PSA, let's take yeah. your test. T t testosterone? Thank you. Levels. <laughs> I, I never able to mention that. And I kept stalling. So one point I said, okay, I'll go, you know, like I'm doing him a favor. Yeah. And when I did the checkup, the guy said, actually, your PSA levels are very, very, very high. Wow. And I'm not comfortable with your PSA level. I knew they were going high, but honestly, I feel well. Every morning I go on my walks or jogging. I do at least every morning, at least 5K walking. Wow. Every day. Before I came Every here. day? Yes. Weekends included? We, we no, no, no. Monday to Friday. Monday and, to Friday. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know. So I felt well. I felt everything. So when he kept saying, come for a test, I said, I'm okay. You know. 
So I did go for the test and the doctor came and said, well, the PSA levels right. are uncomfortably high. And when it gets to that high, I personally, I like to do a biopsy to make sure that not only do you have an enlarged prostate, but there are other issues related. There could be other underlying. We could be cancerous anyway. Right. You know. And I said, okay, fine. But that same time, I was going to go to um, the U.S. to see my daughter's wedding. So no wedding, graduation. You know, so I told her, I'm coming for graduation. I'll, come, I'll be there. But find me a doctor because I'm supposed to do a PFC, bi biopsy. So when I get there, I can do it. So to cut a long story short, I did my biopsy when I went to see her in the U.S. And then we had a meeting with the doctor. And the doctor says, yes, we have done the biopsy. Not only do you have... Uh, an enlarged prostate, but you do have cancer. I said, wow. Yes. And here's the thing that I, I really felt it was important for me to come here, Benjamin. I didn't have any symptoms. Nothing. Nothing. I go for my walk. No tiredness. No tiredness. No lack of appetite. No lack of appetite. Like no blood in stool. No blood in urine. No painful ejaculation. All of this is supposed to be... Did, did, did it affect your libido? In <laughs> <laughs> no. Your libido wasn't affected. I was good. Hey. Masa. You know, so I, I wasn't worried about anything. But when I went for the biopsy and the test results came, they said no. It doesn't look good. Wow. Yeah. And so, so, so when was this? Last year? Yeah, this was last year. Gen last year, January, actually. That's when I went for the test. Was this the first? I mean, you, you spoke about always wanting to check other things. So this wasn't the first time you were checking your PSA. I do check out the PSA, but it was sort of rising. But now I didn't care mm. because I was well. I do my workouts. I don't have any of these symptoms, you know. Um, okay. You know, getting towards it, I started incurring. The only symptom I had was frequent urination. Okay. You know, with every one, two hours I have to urinate. So that's what I, I realized that there's Something some difference. Be. Yeah. Other than that, none of the symptoms. And none. It's, it's, it's very important what you're saying because, first of all, nowadays some 30 year olds and stuff are getting prostate cancer. Yes. At my age, I mean, this year, yes. I've done a PSA. Yes, please. Because we must start please. doing these. And please. thankfully, it was a very, very low, incredibly yeah. healthy rate. Fantastic. But most people in their 30s now, 40s, are getting susceptible to some of these. Yeah. And I hear there's something to do with um, Africans and African-Americans. Yeah. You know, there are different diseases and different mm -hmm, races mm -hmm. that are susceptible mm -hmm, to them. Mm -hmm. Apparently, we have some susceptibility. Yeah. So, so with everything we eat and yeah. for some people, lack of exercise and all of that, we yeah. all have Thank to you. get Thank into. you. Thank you. Yeah. So this is going for all black men, especially, Charlie. If you are listening to us right now, you are above the age of 30, especially above 40, please go and do your PSA checks. Please. Very, very important. You may not feel anything. And Benjamin, what I realized was that there's a difference between, there's, there's a different difference between being fit and being healthy. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a fit guy. I go for my walks. Uh, every day and then I'll do even debris, mountain, and yeah. I, I am fit. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> it appears the chair is leaving <laughs> you <laughs> for all your fitness. <laughs> I am fit, mm. but I wasn't healthy. And, and there's, a, there's a stark difference between them. There's a stark you know, you, So you can be fit, your vitals can be good and everything, but maybe you have a kidney problem that you're not aware of. Maybe there's something going with the liver that you're not aware yeah. of. And only checkups, please, so only checkups can help you find these things out. Okay, so, so I will allow you to sit properly yeah. while I actually <laughs> engage. So we're having a conversation, it's a bear it all conversation with uh, KSM who joins us in the studio. What then would you say this has taught you? Just briefly on that too, to conclude on the health bit. Please, and the, maybe what, the, what would be your caution to other men? The out? only thing that taught me was that I thought I was fit and healthy, but my checkups made me realize that yes, I was fit, but I wasn't healthy. I had a health crisis, mm. you know. So how are you dealing with that right now? Well, fortunately for me, um, because of insurance issues that I, I worked in the city before and my wife also worked in the city. So we have some insurance mm. coverage. Accruing, right. Accruing, yeah. So the way I'm dealing with it is that I went to the U.S. and that's when I, where I got my surgery, mm. you know. Came back after the surgery mm -hmm. 
did my PSA test mm -hmm. and realized that the, the numbers were still going up. Wow. Yes. After I had the whole process removed, mm -hmm. now the whole process has been ruled, right. you know. And then I came here, they said, you send us monthly reports of your PSA. They were still going up. So the organ had been removed and it was still going up. It was still going up. So they figure that there are probably some, they call it nymph, nymph nodes. I don't okay. know. Lymph but, nodes. Yeah. But okay. there was probably some cancerous tissue things still left. Still left. So my next option was to go for radiation. Right. So I went back again and did the radiation for 31 days. Every day wow. for 31 days, I was on the, on the bed for radiation. What was that experience like? I know for some people, it, your hair falls off, your teeth could, you know, your yeah, gums yeah. could bleed and all of that. What was yeah. it like for you? No, fortunately, that's, that was my biggest care when they told me that actually, we have to do radiation. And I said, oh, so I'm going to lose the, the small hair that Oma is keeping. <laughs> and they said, no, um, those effects come a lot from chemotherapy. Oh, okay. This is not chemotherapy. Ra radiation doesn't. This is radiation, right. and it doesn't. It won't affect it that way, you know. So I went to radiation for thirty-one days. They gave me thirty-one episodes of radiation, and then finally, I came out. And the last test that I did, I sent it back to them, and they came back and said, "Finally, we can say that we have detected no traces of cancer." You know, I think it's only fitting. Utinkwa. <laughs> <Utinkwa. laughs> yeah, so folks, me, all I want to say is that the only thing that has saved me is the early checkup. Right. Because with early de detection, with early detection, something can be done. Something can be done. Most of the times when it gets to a point where it is too late, it's because it was not detected early. Yeah. And my own brother, my eldest brother, may he rest in peace. He was the... Uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, in the Chima Bokwa, he was the uh, Achampini mm -hmm. for Chima Bokwa, and he was a banker and everything. And he died. He was only 62, you know. And he didn't have early detection. Wow. When, when he discovered it, it was quite late, you know. So please, I'm just here to say, do the check up. Because once it is detected early, yeah. something can be done. In fact, with most of the cancers, yeah, most once of the they cancers? are de detected, yes. early, you can do something, even in children. Mm -hmm. But if you leave it to get to a certain stage, there's yeah. practically nothing yeah. you can do. Because we have no cure for cancer. We have no cure. Yeah. Once yeah. again, Utrinkwa. It does. We're it. glad you're still here for the 66. <laughs> we, play, we pray for decades more to come. Thank you. Spent with us so we Thank can you. tap into you. But having spoken about that, I'll go back to the bit about you are actually four months older than Ghana is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How would you compare? You, you lived through the Nkrumah era. Mm -hmm. At least you, you didn't see was, much. Uh, yeah. You were very little. Yeah. But you've seen administration after administration in this country. When you juxtapose growing up and what you saw to now. I was listening to the Bishop of Jatsakan today in the news talking about then and now and how things have unraveled, so to speak. What do you see? What are the differences? Where are we getting things right? Where are we missing the plot? I think where we are missing the plot is that uh, Ghana has gone haywire. Ghana has gone haywire. Yeah, we've gone haywire. How so? Um, there is so much indiscipline. And it creeps through the whole fabric of society. Indiscipline is at its peak. And I think that is why we are suffering. There's no discipline. There's, there's no strong sense of, if I will, leadership that is taking control of things and saying, no, this can be done, this, can, this is what we want, and let's follow this path. You know, it's like, be you lose, Benjamin, you know, everybody does practically what they want. You know, so I think, unfortunately, Ghana is at the point where, you know, we are going with the flow. Whatever you feel good about, just do it. And Wherever the waves hit us, yeah, go. because the system has become so tight. Say, every week, pack, pack, pack. Mm. <laughs> you have to do something to survive. Mm. You have to do something to add to whatever you're doing now in terms of a regular income, or maybe you don't even need income. You have to do pack, pack, pack. And generally, the thinking is like, pack, pack, dear Charlie, Lord be any home. I have to survive, and how I survive, dear, is up to me, you know. And so, so even you, you have had to, I mean. 
on the back of the economic times, inflation is what it is, 40.4% yes. exchange rate. We all know that our debt issues, the banking issues, KSM2, they do pop once a while, <laughs> oh, I have to do <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to do things and explore other, uh, other, the other dimension. No, no, explore other options of getting revenue because I can't live more around revenue. Basically, you know, and I do it. I have savings, and I keep the savings and everything. And I, my wife and I, now we put up a hotel, Cactus, Cactus Street. Street. Yes. Yeah. Your little and hideout. Think, yeah. <laughs> Yellow house. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, at least we have put our investment in something to help us in our yeah, as you older go. years as we retire. We have, you know, but everything is shaky now, you know. So um, I don't know. To answer your question, I think things have become too loose. There's no strict center that is holding anything together. It's like everything is loose. And that's, that's my worry. You know, basically, and um, you you look at our recent budget, and you are not a finance person. You're I'm not, not an economist. I'm not. I'm you're, not. You're, you're into comedy and film and all of that. You were in nafty way back when. Yeah. But what, what do you see basically? There's been so much talk in recent times, for example, about a debt exchange, debt restructuring, so to mm. speak. Mm. Do you have any hope when you look at? So this is a ship. Ghana is a ship. The president and his team are the helm, yeah. steering the ship. Yeah. What do you see? How confident are you? We've been told that we're in a crisis, but for you, what do you see? You've lived long enough. You've seen it all. Yeah, I, I like your reference to a ship. I think I read something that says um, anyone can steer a ship, but it takes a, the captain to actually control the destination of the ship, where the ship is going, you know, to understand the radar, to understand everything that it takes to understand where the ship is going. Mm. Otherwise than that, anybody can steer the ship, you know. And I think that what is missing is, is, is a great captain that's seen the broad picture and is actually steering the ship. What I feel is like everybody is trying to steer the ship and it takes only one strong captain to direct the, uh, what a di to, to, to come up with the direction of the ship. Have, have we had such a person with that sense of purpose, that sense of direction in the Fourth Republic? Let's stick to the last 30 years. The last 30 years. I am very biased because I'm an encromised even before I was born. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> even before you were born. Even before I was born, I was born an encromised and I believed in the, his ideals and I've grown up to understand why he was looking at Africa at the broader level and everything that he was thinking. I have my little disagreements with him here and there, but generally my bias is that, you know, I was born and incromised, you know. And I think we, we, we strayed away from the direction that would have gotten us to where we are. Let's talk about the MPP for now because they are the ones in power. And all I can say is that I'm very, 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 very disappointed that they lost the plot. They lost the plot. They lost the plot. Because the plot coming in was Ghana beyond aid. Hallelujah. That's what we need. Look, we are, I'm 66. Ghana is what? Almost 66. Yeah. We've got into the age where we should do things beyond aid. We have to stop begging. We have the Beyond baby steps. Thank you. And I was so happy when the president was talking to Macron and he gave it to him. And that speech, yeah, I, I think, speech. yeah, reverberated through the world, actually. Finally, somebody has risen up from Africa and he's going to confront this imperial, you know, Abrofo with the Abrofo and their control. This man seems that he wants Ghana to take control of things. Let's go beyond this aid, aid thing. What can we do for ourselves? was lamenting that Africans were crossing the desert and going to do menial jobs. Why don't we create a healthy environment in Africa so that these young men can stay? And I was like, yes, we lost the plot. How do we get where we are? You know, we went back to the same old thing that has crippled this whole fourth uh, republic with, you know, borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and seeing that every external aid that we brought, that's what is going to save us. But it didn't. 
I was very, very worried when we, we, we landed alone or sold some bonds. We were so happy that we had a kinky watcher party. For me, that was a red flag. You've gone and, and gotten so much born so say, Uba be a celebrity with the King K and watch a party. No! You're referring to the finance minister. <laughs> whoever, mm. whoever the cup fits, so let them wear it, you know. Why was that necessary? What was the plan? What was the agenda? What were the concrete steps that we have put in place to make sure that whatever we have borrowed are going to be translated to something concrete for Ghanaians to benefit? Not only that, but we can raise enough revenue, it can generate enough revenue, so we pay back the loans. We all hear when we're told that everybody can borrow. If, if, if governor, governance is about borrowing, then let's Everybody can do it. Everybody can do that. My six-year-old son can do it, or three-year-old daughter can do it. So there was expectation. The plot sounded solid, Benjamin. The plot was excellent. So I don't know where... Was the problem the execution? The execution. The execution. I remember when you interviewed me long ago, I think that time we were with another radio station, yes. and you asked me about free SHS. And I said, great idea. The idea is novel, man. <laughs> only worry. Then, I think it had just been introduced. What I said was that, Ben, my only worry was that I think it was rushed. We can't turn education into a political event. Let's take our time with that. That's all I said. I remember during those times going to a funeral, a good friend of mine died around, so, so it was buried in Sumin, and I went there, and I was accosted by people. Eh, Chris, and now Nancy said, no, that is was rush. What do you mean? Take your time. All I'm saying is that everything that we need to implement, let us strategize and implement it A, B, C, D, step by step, knowing that when we take this step, this is about to happen. This is what can happen. So let's, let's, let's know what can happen and let's, as part of the steps you're taking, let's plan to fight against those things that can erupt, that can work against it. That's all I was saying. When you look at free SHS now, since you have brought it up and, and its execution, implementation, recently the president said, oh, the students have passed like this. It is, it is, it vindicates me in terms of free SHS. But what are the core problems you see? People have said, for example, that no, it shouldn't be a blanket policy. There are people who are well-to-do who can put their children through school. They should be paying. There are so many, pro I mean, professors, academics, so many people have said it's a good policy being executed in a bad way. What are the fundamental problems you see with it? This execution was so rushed. You know, and I know that the person that promised that as one of his flagships, that I'm going to give free SHS. So that was a promise. Great. And I, and I applaud him that he wanted to stick to his promise. But it's not just about sticking to the promise. It's about delivering the promise and delivering it with excellence. Mm. You know? And I don't think that anything would have hurt if he had thought maybe we'll put the plans and the strategy in place for the next three years. And in my last, in the, in the third year or fourth year, I will like the implementation so that it takes off and it takes off right. That's all I'm saying. Who is the right man in Ghana who will say that's an evil thing to do to give free HS? Nobody will say that. Mm. It's a trivial idea. Even the constitution says we should work towards that progressively. So if you have chosen to work towards that, make sure you do it and do it so that everybody at the end of the day is talking about that. You know, now free HS is fantastic, but what are people thinking about it now? Yeah. You know? yeah. And that, that to me is the major concern. You can always, you can always, <laughs> what do you call it? You can always improve things. Mm. So just check to see how you can get it and execute it so that there are no problems with it. You know? Right. And the other problem, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Benjamin, before uh, your next question, is that we talk too much in Ghana. We do? We do. Mm. You know. And there's this thing called the quicksand. You know, quicksand is like mud. As I teach it, mud that you can, you can fall into accidentally. And there's something that they say about the quicksand. They say the more you the more wiggle, you struggle, yeah. the deeper you sink. So when you fall into quicksand, try and, and remain steady until you get help. You know. But if you try to rush, hey, Chile, the more you panic and you try to rush, 
the quicker you will sink. And I think that Ghana is now in an economic quicksand. Ghana is in an economic yes. quicksand. Quicksand, yeah. And the more we struggle, the deeper we sink. So let us just take our time to analyze deeply what needs to be taken instead of any knee-jerk reactions that will help us to sink quicker. You know? I, I don't know what you think about this, especially as you broach that subject. There's the e-levy, for mm -hmm. example. I don't know what your take is on it. It's been reduced, but the threshold is gone. VAT has gone up by 2.5%. Some say for a president who himself you know, embarked on kumi preko, siemi preko, viemi preko, on the back of some of these developments, he has no business doing this. Just give me your brief thoughts on that so we move on. Well, I think there's nothing wrong with having led a demonstration against it several years ago. We don't understand it. We don't want it. Because at that time, the whole VAT thing was new. Was Nobody really understood it. It's a regressive tax. It was this. It was that. But looking back, where we are now, we now realize how important that was. You know, and I think that if it's been increased and people are talking about it, they're not talking about it, that it was wrong for it to be increased, but it's somehow wrong for the person who led demonstration against it to now increase it. All he has to do is actually, back in those days, those were different times. Those were different age. Those were whatever. Now we have all come to know that, yes, we were wrong. We need this. Yes, we were wrong. Small acceptance. And it doesn't take much, oh. So, oh, you're here. Hmm. Now we need this. So this is why we should do this. And I don't think there will be any more issues in Ghana about uh, when our lady demonstration. That was years ago. When was the Tukumeko demonstration? Years ago. 90s. 90s. It's yeah. gone. 95 thereabouts. 95 thereabouts. We're in 2022. So why are you going to hold somebody who did something in 95? I can't tell uh, uh, responsible for something you're doing in 2022. Only because we haven't heard from the person say, ah, actually, when I'm here, but me team. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Like, now I know that we need it. Mm. And especially in these times. And trust me, Charlie, Ghana is in a very, very critical times. And we have all got to understand that there are going to be some extremely painful pages. So, so, since you yeah. talk about critical times, let me just very briefly, I want your take on this. Some have compared what we're facing now to the 1983 era and uh, former President Rawlings. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Some have said this is worse. Yeah, yeah. What's your take? Incidentally, you I lived was, through that. I lived through that, but I wasn't in Ghana. You weren't in the country. But let me tell you a very funny story because I remember coming back to visit uh, in 1983 and... Um, I think uh, something my parents had for dinner, there was kinky. And I told my mother, oh, <laughs> Nasa, when you say me in And then my father said something that I'll never forget. to say, share. Say, say, baby, you know. And I'll explain that in English soon. Baby, you know. Die wuchi kran ubedi. And yet they won't pay. I don't know if you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Was it, they say they they wuchi kranu ube diyo kweku. Just fill your belly. And yet they won't pay. You might just fill your belly. They say something that you actually don't like kranu. You have to eat it. So don't talk about oh I don't like. Uh, it's not something I want. Anyway, you know. So we we are there now. You know. Mm. Your question was what do I compare the two? I wasn't in Ghana. Right. I just knew that things were rough, mm. very very rough. And all I know is that when it comes to rough times. It demands stricter actions and stricter measures, you know. So we have to brace ourselves mm. because Enye easy. That's all I can say. Enye easy. Enye now easy. we're at the doorstep of the IMF. But one, one thing definitely that people have been talking about recently, former President Kufour had cause to talk about it as well, the numbers in government. You remember when this enterprise started with the MPP in power under Kufuado? He said he was a man in a hurry. And so he needed a, a chunk of people to push the program. When you look at what has happened since being in a hurry, and now, when he still appears to be in a hurry, how does that factor in, the numbers? People have said that we, we can have about 40 ministers. What, what is your quick take on that? My quick thinking is this, uh, Benjamin, that once you reach the age of 74, 75 plus, you're... Your hurriness, being in a hurry at the age of 85, cannot be compared to somebody who is 30 who is in a hurry. 
Well, mm. the, the definition of hurry when you are, you are in your 70s, to somebody who is in their 30s, it's still very slow motion. <laughs> so I don't want to take too much about being in a hurry. He's still at that age and that thinking, which I believe is very analog, and is let's take our time and let's go everything slow, slow, slow. So even in a hurry, it's in a hurry of a context of slowness. So even in because a hurry, of the age, the president is still analog, not digital. Oh, very analog. <laughs> what we need is somebody who we no no the analog the analog age has has gone and passed. Mm. So let's look at let's look for the digital drive now. Mm. When I say digital drive, I mean that even the thinking must be digital. Right. You know. Because as for digital, there, <laughs> there are a number of things this administration will tell you when it comes to digital. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it's great, you know, there are some things digitally that are fantastic. In fact, but the I'm, last time I was checking, the vice president was launching something and talking about the fact that our health system would soon be the most digital in, on the continent. The Ghana card will be used and all of that. So... In that aspect, yes, but the thinking. The thinking, mm. the thinking. Mm. You know, you can have a digital drive and at the same time have those who are running things thinking very, very, very analog. And I think the thinking is still very, 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 very much analog. And on the numbers, justified to have all those numbers in there? The ministers and the, all of that, presidential staffers? That's very, very sad. And I think the first point of call in this very, very harsh economic times that we're dealing with, the first point of call is how we cut the numbers. You know, how much money we're using to pay presidential staff to pay this. That's the first point of call. Cut the ministers, cut all these extravagant things. Mm. What amazes me is that you have a bucket and you're fetching water in that bucket, and the bucket is leaking. Right. Okay, so your duty is to look at the bucket and seal all the leaks. But what we do instead is that, Charlie, the bucket is leaking, so instead of putting one gallon of water, let's now put three gallons of water to make up for the leaks. Right. Let's pump how much more water we put in it, and it still leaks. So the solution is to seal the leaks right and i think there are too many leaks in this country mm. and the government that will come and decide Charlie, i'm going to seal all these loopholes they would have gotten it right you know but you can't be talking about yes we have a budget we have to do this cut and at the same time we have all these loopholes that are open that is draining the country in other words we must drain the swamp yes that's what you're saying yes Corruption and all everything related yes. to that. Let, let, let me just, uh, even as you talk about that, you're also very free-minded, so to speak, liberal. You share your thoughts on your social media and all of that. Yeah. One of those that I, I, I took note of, this was um, the 1st of December. You said, who had the, quote, brilliant, and your satire, mm. Mm. who had the brilliant and intelligent idea to remove road tolls? What was the motive? I call it fascinating thinking. Now we're bringing it back. What do you think about that entire development? Why? I think we're raking in 270,000 or so yeah. CDs per day from road tolls. Thank you. What was the intelligence in there that I'm thinking of road tolls? What was the intelligence? If there were leaks in the road tolls, there was something wrong with the road tolls. Let's fix it. We need the road tolls. Why in the world do you have people who use the roads freely? So I keep thinking, whose intelligent idea was that? It doesn't make sense. And fortunately, for me, and those who have always said that it didn't make sense, it's now being brought back. Which means we have been vindicated. It was absolutely nonsensical to say, nobody pays rule tools in Ghana. For what? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I put out that tweet that, you know, whose idea was it to do this? And I said it was fascinating thinking because I want people to think about these things. Yeah. What, was, what was the motive behind it? It doesn't make sense. I get your point. Let, <laughs> let's talk. I, I want us to move the conversation because, yes, we are talking leadership, but there are various you know, angles of leadership. Yeah. Let's talk religious leadership. Let's talk whether religion 
has done us justice in this country. Recently, you had calls, I believe it was the Christian Council, some of them met at a place. You, you threw some shades at uh, Agrada and spoke <laughs> about our gullibilities and fallibilities as a people. But you also took on members of the clergy and going to, to be honest, they hadn't just gone there to pray. They, they went and did other things, inspect, and then they prayed at the end. You know, our, our pastors must pray. Um, has, has religion, so to speak, not just Christianity, everything else, traditional African religion, Christianity, Islam, have they done us justice in this country? Because people are also quick to point out there are other developed countries that are not necessarily religious but are doing very well. What is wrong with our religion? What is wrong with our religion is that it is infused into us the sense of this everything is being controlled by God. Is everything not? is by God's will. Is it not? No, it isn't. Mm. God gave us intelligence. God told us that I'm going to give you the right to make your own choices, Benjamin. Right. But this is it too. When you make your choices, be aware that your choices come with certain consequences. Mm. You're free to make the choice. You have free You're will. You're free to make the choice. It is your decision to make the choice. So, so make it. But be aware mm. that whatever choice you make will come with certain consequences. Right. So we make those choices. And then when the consequences, consequences come, we say, oh, why do we have these consequences? Then we go to God to pray. Oh, God, remove these consequences. Was it be not deceived? God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he reap. So what do you mean by going and you go and sow a whole bunch of uh, apples? And then when the time comes to harvest, you go and tell God, oh God, now come with oranges. Mm. That's what God is dealing with us in Ghana now. Yeah. What's it about you guys? You sowed apples? Why are you not complaining that you have apples but you want oranges? Why didn't you sow oranges? Yeah. And that's the state where religion has put our minds that we believe that it doesn't matter what we sow, we are entitled to certain things from God. And we have got it all so wrong. Mm. When I hear people say, well, let's go for a 21, phase, for 21 day fast for Ghana. I think, are you really serious? You don't fast to, 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 to improve the value of the city. You don't pray for that. Mm. Do the things that are needful. Sow the right seed and you reap the right seed. But don't sow the wrong seeds. You import everything, including a friend is saying secondhand Andes yeah. and secondhand bra, and you want your dollar to rise. Mm. These are common sense things that we refuse to understand and refuse to practice. And then we go to, I say, God is working over time in Ghana. God will have bread. Nyami have bread. Yes, see, boys are bread. And I'm saying it here today, say, Nyanku boys will have bread. All you prophets and men of God and name, go and ask God, say, Ghana, Eba Ghana, Omena Yana. I mean, common sense. Mm. Yeah, bro. And when I talk about this, they will curse and call it is. It is me. Yeah, and I was going to bring that up. There are some people who have, you know, the rumor mill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. KSM doesn't believe in God. KSM is. Because you had a Methodist, you, one of your parents, or is it both of them? My father mm -hmm. was a Presbyterian church. He was the moderator of the Presbyterian church, which means he was the wow. highest. Wow. Yeah. And he was the only one that said for three conservative terms, it was four terms to be moderator. He served 12 years. Wow. And after that, they went to the synod and said, Charlie, let's bring a law that you can't serve more than two years. Because I hear you're a lifetime moderator. <laughs> so, yes, I've come from the, I've brought up in the house of a moderator of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. And I'm very, very, very proud of that man. Mm. You know. Are you still Presbyterian? Well, now I'm, I'm, I, I, I just basically have a relationship with God, but it's not guided by any church any thing. particular denomination? No, 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 it's no. not. It's not. Do you go to church? No, not really. Why not? When church, mm. I think for me, when I go to church, I want to come to church and hear a pastor that is talking about something that is relevant and applicable to my life now. Mm. I don't want to come to church and then you're talking about what Israel did some years ago mm -hmm. and Israel conquered the Philistines and things like that. Mm -hmm. Talk to me 
about KSM. This is your situation today. This is Ghana's situation today. How do we get out of, the, out of it mm. using God as our guideline or whatever? But, but, but I don't but, get but, that. But it's the same God. I'm sure your, your father, the <laughs> Presby moderator, is the yeah. same Bible. Yeah. Used. And, and these, these words in there, these books in there, also teach us something about real life. These are experiences of other people that we Fantastic. can Fantastic. It's true. Mm. Two things. Mm. Two things. For me, I think the Bible is a great book, like many other great books. Mm. The Bible is not exceptional. The Bible is not like this is divinely inspired by God, so everything in it must be taken word for word. You don't no. think it's divine? No, 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 no. Right. No. My biggest problem mm -hmm. is this, and this is where people misunderstand me. I do not say I don't believe in God. I only say that I think, I believe that the God that I served, mm. the God that I love, mm. the God that I worship is not the same God that you have written about in your Bible. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And so you why? Think, you think all of that was uh, cooked up? For the most part. Okay. People sat down to write about God and they wrote about God the way they understood how God will work. But that's, trust how, me, that's Benjamin. how God reaches us. That's trust me, Benj it. Benjamin. If somebody was writing about God today, the book of life, there's this big book that has all the names of all the people in this world. Imagine mm. billions of people in the, wide, in the world. Oh. There's one big book that has all the names and the record of people. If somebody was writing about the Bible today, they'd probably say God has an app. Mm -hmm. The one you download, it has everybody's something. They wrote at the time that they were writing, this is what was real for them, mm. and that's what they wrote. Mm. They wrote believing that God was a man like me, me and you, Benjamin. Look at the story when they say God was testing uh, Abraham. Mm. Say so God wanted to test Abraham to find out how Abraham was loyal. So he says, Abraham, take your only son Isaac and go and kill him. Mm. We test Abraham. Okay. That's God. Meaning. Mm. I don't know about Abraham. I just want to test him. So Abraham takes his son and just before he kills him, God says, hey, hold on. Don't kill Isaac. For now, I know. For now. Which simply means, I didn't know. Abraham, I have to test you. This is not the God I serve. Mm. The God I serve knows. And according to the same Bible, he knows even the amount of hair on my head. Yeah. Why would you down... Put her the same God and tell me he wasn't sure about whether Abraham will kill Isaac or not. So he had to test him. And just before Abraham, he said, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you think, you think God doesn't test people's loyalty? No, like, no, no, no. Like we see with Job, for example. No, 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 no. God will allow you to go through tests. Okay. And when you go through the test, yes, indeed, you yourself now says, yeah. have an opportunity to evaluate yourself. How did I do in this test? Mm. So he'll allow you to go through the test so that you yourself can evaluate how you performed but it's not like he didn't know mm. it's for your benefit so ksm believes in god but you don't all these channels islam christianity thank traditional you. african religion thank you and even the bible you don't believe in that so no so, no, no, so, no so how do you how do you serve god how do you worship him how do you express your your faith in god how do you express it it is is <laughs> it's just how I I believe service to God mm. is service to humanity. I saw that coming. You saw that? <laughs> you, you serve God through humanity. That's which, which the Bible says as well. Yes! Mm. And that's to be end of discussion. Mm. How do you serve humanity? Okay? How do you as an employee you're working, you have a driver who works for you. That driver is not making that much money because mm. and at the end of the month, you, know, you go and take the money that you have used to help the driver. And you know, I'm fine with God because I pay my tithe. God has said, no, pay your driver well. Save humanity. Right. You're saving God. You don't see God. You have only, it's yeah. only your faith. So how do you do things for this God? and ignore your own brother. It's in the Bible. It is. That's why I say that I believe certain parts of the Bible are very, very good. And then there are certain things too that needs to be reviewed okay. and to be- <laughs> Just a few more matters in some three, four minutes. I want us to wrap sure, this up. Sure, 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 sure. Since we're talking religion now, how do you feel about our national cathedral? And 
the sums of money we're pumping in there yeah. versus just this morning, we're looking at a, a school in Adregano, Adma, I yeah, think. Yeah. Dilapidated structures. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. In Tanzania, they are scrapping Independence Day celebrations. They are saving about $445,000. Thank, Thank you. And they are pumping it, guess what, into schools. Thank you. National Cathedral, Thank what do you, you. think? Very briefly. You, you've answered it. <clears throat> what is the relevant thing? Where is the priority? And especially at this Ghana time, at, at this Ghana right now, that we are begging the IMF to come to our sisters, the CEC Cathedral, so that we can worship God. Are we, are we joking with God? Did God tell us that he was homeless? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense. And the same Bible that they use and that they have, well, how many, all these board of directors who are pastors and things, I refer them to go to Luke, I don't remember the exact scripture, but Jesus Christ himself said, who is intending to build a tower will not sit down first and right. count the cost. Right. Right. What does it mean? Even Jesus is saying, Chalemu strategize you. At this time of your country that you are begging INF for no coffee, at this much of time, does it make sense? So for me, it doesn't make sense. If I could have to make a personal good pledge to God that I will do it, it's between him and his God to go and clear all that land and right. say, I'm going to. For me, it doesn't make sense. It would it have happens. been different if we were making money now, Ghana was great. But at this time, that people are even worried about their pensions. Who could see cathedral? Now, then, so that God will say, Oh, Chaligana, for the home you good part, they build a cathedral. You know, there, there's something, it's very analog. It's very analog. Very, very, when That's the finance really minister is talking and he quotes these things, I say, Finance minister, analog Come mm. to 2022. Mm. Yes. Let's, let's wrap the conversation. Just two things, and I, <laughs> I want you to be very brief. I can't have a conversation with you and not talk. The creative arts. Yes. And I can't forget the malapropism. Do you, do you know the line I'm referring to? Which one? I am Master Sergeant Lassisi, Commander-in-Chief of all the sergeants in Ghana. We shall not leave any turn and stone. <laughs> Instead of any stone and turn. I'll never forget those lines. The creative arts in Ghana. Yeah. Are we doing well? Is it sick? Is the industry sick? Are we seeing enough? And maybe to wrap the conversation, you attended both Presec and Prempe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First year, Presec. First year, Presec. Then Presec, you did yes. six years or at, so. At Prempe. At yeah. Prempe. Yeah. Where do your loyalties lie? When, when I, <laughs> I was like, ah. So when, when they are doing the National Science and Math Quiz and, and the two schools lock horns, which one do you support? <laughs> very, 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 very difficult question you've asked me. Because I'm what that dear by by i don't know by uh, that's why by I, default by default me or that day and i love presec and i i really happy are we studios are we students of presbyterian secondary school so that will never go anywhere but i left and i went to premper too <laughs> you left and you went you didn't six years there you, you are saying you left and you went to premper too i know i did i didn't want you at presec i know but i'm, I'm saying the premper people will be like ah you did one year at presec and you are saying all this or that year or that year <laughs> and you did six years with us and you are no no I, oh, yeah, yeah. so 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 i'm 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 i'm, I'm premper definitely mm. Mm. if the two meet who do i support the winner, the winner. <laughs> <laughs> One of them will say, yes, or that day, happy right. are we, when people will say, yes. Oboha, boha. Oboha, boha. Ayo. <laughs> creative arts, that's how we wrap. 30 seconds. How 30 are we seconds. doing? Oh, we still have a long way to go with the creative arts. I think we should start now picking winners in the creative arts, you know, identify those who are doing exceptionally well in the creative arts and support them and, and, and give them the financing and everything to boost them. We have to pick winners, not only in the creative arts, but in several areas. But because you talk about the creative arts, let me end there, you know. There are some amazing people doing outstanding things in the creative arts. And I think there's nothing wrong with any government saying, I'm picking the winners of these people and I'm going to back them mm. so that they can create something that can represent this country. Mm. I think that's where we're at, yeah. Just a few reactions. Uh, this one is from George uh, from the Forestry Commission. He says, I love the show with KSM. We must be serious with our health and undertake regular checkups. Thank He's taking you. taking a cue. Thank you. Uh, there are so many reactions. I can't look at all of them. But this one says, we have to be critical thinkers to change our situation in the country. That's King George, another one. And he says, religion is our biggest problem mm. in the mm. country. Mm. KSM, it's been amazing having you come by.
And I just saw, was that a message on your Premper page? <laughs> <laughs> I saw the friend pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's been refreshing. Thank any, you any, so much, any, Benjamin. Any, I'm any, glad. I'm glad I made it here. Any final words for us? Ten seconds. My final words, folks. You can now, but what really is important for me? Your checkups, especially black males, Ghanaians over forty. Do your checkups. You never know. I mean, I, sometimes Benjamin talks that if anything happened, God forbid, not coming. Ooh, yeah, because ah, KSM, Charlie. Yes, yesterday I was on a walk with him at Legon. He's always there. Or those at the gym who come and see me every day at the gym, they would have never understood. Ah, the, the, the guy was fit. He was healthy. Every day he was at the gym. Do you know what comes to mind? Tell How me. about we partner and maybe speak to the health authorities? I am I'm, I'm much younger, yes. but I am still yes. in that bracket. You are much older, maybe more susceptible, still in that bracket. How about we collaborate Speak to the health authorities yes. and maybe champion the cause of love to. prostate health. I would love to. I would love to, man. Let's seal it. It's, it's, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. <laughs> ben Benjamin and KSM uh, on yes. prostate issues. Yes. I think we could, both from our little, our small yes. companies, do something. Perfect. Sensitize the public. Also. It's a done deal. I'm ready when Thank you are. You. Thank you for Thank coming. Thank you. We've enjoyed you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Do I need to say anything else? You know him already. A uh, man of many things and he bears it all. If uh, there's any fire after this, he would have left. We'll have to douse the fire with our fire extinguisher. <laughs> but it's been so good having him. Stay with us because up next we're going to take your thoughts on all the matters we've discussed today. From Parliament and the budget and uh, all the Kobe including health and what KSM has shared with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back.